Mathematica and the Raspberry Pi. Frequency Shift Keying. There are many variations of Frequency Shift Keying. We're just going to look at the most simple one, and that is binary FSK. There are only four variables that we actually have to specify. The rest of the parameters are derived from them. The four variables are the time window, the number of samples, and the two frequencies. We can now write the equation for the two signals and plot them. The plot of signal 1 looks like this. And there it is. It runs from the zero sample to the number of samples divided by 2, which is about 512. We can look at signal 2. And there it is. It runs from where the first sample quit to our 1024 samples over here. So they both look right. To eliminate them from the program, but to keep them there, if we ever want to review them again, we just put a semicolon behind the plot function. And it keeps our program looking nice and neat. It's also a pretty good idea to do some basic checking. So for example, using this if statement, if the second frequency is greater than fs max, that would tell us that aliasing has occurred. If that happens, then this statement over here, OK, continue the analysis, would change to aliasing is occurring, increase ns or decrease dt. To further assist in troubleshooting the program, it's probably a good idea to tabulate all of the variables and their derivatives and create a table like this. And then we can quickly see whether there's something in here which is inconsistent and needs changing. We can now write the time domain function as a piecewise equation. We're also going to put this into a data table. The signal table, we can plot just to make sure that it is what we expected. I'm just taking off the semicolon, run the program, and there it is. So there's our two frequencies and the range from 0 to 1024 samples. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to change the axis from number of samples to time. To do that, we're going to create another table with just a time signal in it. And we're going to replot it. So we'll take a look at that. And there it is, exactly the same signal as before, but now instead of a sample number, it's the actual time. Remember our time window went to 0.1, and so here it is, 0.1. If we do a list line plot, it will connect all the dots for us. And we can label it. And so there it is, the frequency shift keyed signal in the time domain. You'll notice that there is no value at t equals 0. That's because when we tabulated the signal, n started from 1. The 0 term is actually the last sample in the previous time window. We can now calculate the Fourier transform. We take this data and place it into a table. What we also want to do is include the actual frequencies rather than time or samples. So we have to convert the first column to frequency. Notice that the amplitude of the spectrum is 0.5. Our time signal had an amplitude of 1. The reason why this is 0.5 is because each tone burst is on for only half the time of the window. 
Secondly, you notice that the spectrum is bunched way off to the left. Now we can improve that by adjusting our two variables. And again, they were either the time window or the number of samples. A third alternative is to zoom in on the data that we've collected. To zoom in on the spectrum, we first specify the minimum and maximum frequencies of interest. Both of these frequencies must be in the table, the signal table. And then we can plot that range from the table. Collecting all the tables together to one location makes it a little easier to understand what's happening. So we can take a look at the signal. the signal and time. The Fourier transform, which consists of real and imaginary components. The Fourier transform, which is the magnitude and the frequency. The Fourier transform of the zoom. And finally, the frequency and magnitude of the zoom window. And there you have it. Frequency shift keying.